did pass my driving test first time. A long time ago now, but I did pass it first time. Very, very close. I mean, it was like one from the maximum minors, but I got through. No, it was like forgetting that I had mirrors. Because in my racing car, I didn't have mirrors, so I think you just don't use mirrors in your racing car, so. But no, no, no massive problems. My first road car um, was a Peugeot 106 XS. It lasted me two days. Two days, very after. Yeah. <laughs> just try and relax, I guess. But my family's normally at events, so I just see them last, high five my kids and stuff. Normally makes me take my mind off of things. Um, have a bit of a brief conversation with my spotter, because whoever's spotting for me, sometimes it's my wife, sometimes one of my good friends. Um, so I normally just try and have a bit of a chat at the start about nothing too serious, to try and relax, because the key is being relaxed. The key is not overthinking things, and we're all good drivers. Everybody here is good drivers. Um, so the best thing to do is just let you drive and do the natural bit. So not to overthink things, that's what I try and do. This level, this race in the World Championship, there is no enjoyment. If I'm completely honest. There's, you don't get a chance to to, 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 to to be happy or satisfied with what you've just done because it's never good enough. It's the, the gap, even if you're in the lead, is not big enough. So nothing's ever enough until you win the race, which I've not won one at this level, so I don't know. But I mean, the enjoyable bit comes if you get a good result, the enjoyment's after the race. But I can't say I ever have fun or enjoy it until that point. Because it's always a fight. You're just fighting for them to be the best, to be the best. And that's not enjoyable, it, but it's, it's a challenge, it's, it's why we do it. It's, it's, you want to be the best, fighting to be the best. So uh, when, you, when you get to the finish and you are, then that's a different story. But during the race, no, it's not fun. I've had a few scary moments in my time. Um, it'll be Lydon Hill 2010, or yeah, start 2010. Citizen C4 in the first corner, rolled nine times, and that was, that was a real eye-opener for me to realise how fast we're going, how dangerous it can be. So I was just driving the car and I mean, put it into a ball. And that was a bit of a... It took me a couple of races to come back from that thinking, you know, that was scary. You know, you're going over and over and over and over and over and you're not sure if you're going to get out. So that's, that's most of all, it's dangerous. But you can't, you can't think about things like that. Without doubt, America. Um, my wife and kids are American. Um, I lived in America for about five or six years. I raced in America for four or five years um, alongside Europe and America, two different programs. And I love I love the place. I have a house there with my wife, and so it's, it's unfortunate we went there and it got pulled again. So if I had the choice to go anywhere, it would be America. For a holiday, for a race, for anything really. So X Games LA is still my biggest and best event I've ever done in my career. And part of that is because of where it is. It's just a great place to be. So yeah, if anyone's listening, that's what we need to go next year. <laughs> full-time job now. I retired last year, was planning to retire last year because it wasn't going very well for me and then this whole deal came around and I'd already started a full-time job or started a business essentially and I couldn't back out of that once this came back around and so I spent a couple of years not racing and then all of a sudden boom here's a big program like a proper program in front and I couldn't turn that off so that doesn't mean that's probably one of my biggest reasons for success at the moment it's because that, that means I can't think about racing until I'm at the race. And when I leave the race, I can't think about racing. Work is too important to think about racing. Uh, so it's very good that I, I, my head's in the game when I get here, and my head's out when I leave. Um, but it's, I mean, it's, the rally is really physically straining, and it's very short races. So when, it gets, when you get a hot event, it can take it out of you. Because the cars are really hot, the radiators are in the car, it's super hot inside. So when you get a hot event, that takes it out of you a little bit. It takes a couple of days to get over it, but it's just hydration. But mentally, it's a tough sport. It's really tough to be able to switch it on and switch it off as fast as you have to because the races are three minutes long and you've got to like want to kill the other drivers. You've got to want to fight to, to the death and to just go calmly to the grid, shaking everyone's hand and smiling and signing autographs, and jump in the car, put your helmet on, and then want to just go mad and then get out and smile again. It's like mentally, it's a challenge. So that takes a little bit, but working now is helping you. Guys. I 
Uh, my dad, my dad's a legend. My dad's like famous in the sport for not just his driving, but for his personality and also for what he's done. Race tracks and championships organising. Like he's done it in, in rally because he's been and done everything really and succeeded at everything. I can't say I've got those same successes, but when it comes to the driving side of things, I feel that I took everything he had and I've had a, I've had a better opportunity. I've done it for longer. I've had more. I've had more resources behind me, more support. When he was doing it, he was on his own. Like it was a one-man band. So, yeah, I mean. We've both got second in the European Championship and never improved, improved like that. So we've both got to go back. When I retire, unless I better now, our best was peak was the second in the European Championship. I've won more European events than him, but he was driving an RS200, which I can drive now. I've got the, 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 the I guess, the, the luck and the, the ability to, to drive his car sometimes. And there's nothing like it. Like Driving one of those cars is ridiculously mad. Oh, yeah, he still got it and he still races it, and I get to drive it, the RS200, and hey, racing this sport and that, that's next level. So I would say, if he'd had the cars and the resources and stuff when he was racing, probably would be able to match it, but I've had a better chance at it and I've done a better job. Well, KYB's been very interesting for me. I've, before now, I've only worked with the, the conventional brands in, in the sport of like, off-road racing. And KYB are very new to it and me, um, but it's great because it's such a, a, a more, a, let's not just say more intelligent, but a, a very intelligent way of, 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 uh, of looking at the whole situation and the evaluation of how the damper works and the evaluation of how, how our feedback is and planning the next event and so on. It's, it's very, very, very forward thinking and smart. I guess it's Japanese. It's Japanese. Um, it's great work with the Japanese guys, NASA. We've had various different guys come in, like four or five different guys. They've been a huge support to us this year. I'd say one of the strongest things for us this year is being the ability to just turn the, turn the suspension upside down and start completely from scratch in the next event. And you'd never normally do that. You'd just change a couple of clips, but we've got the ability that they go back and rebuild everything, redesign everything, and come back with a whole new plan. So uh, it's been really good. Really, really, um, really challenging, but really fun as well. Where it works, it's satisfying, so uh, build some good relationships and hope to continue it. My, uh, my story really is quite simple. My dad was a racing driver, professional, sponsored by the oil company. When I was a kid, he retired because he couldn't make it work, he needed to go to work to fund his family. And then when I wanted to go racing, he was like, absolutely not, there's no chance. You never make the same mistake I made. It doesn't work. One in a million people can go professional, right? Like, it's just going to be like, a poison. Like it's, you want to spend every penny you've got on going racing. It's an addiction. And so he stopped me as best he could, but there was no stopping me. And so I guess that was my, my, my still now, my biggest drive to succeed is to, is, is to, is to win, to a point, to be the best. And that, that, that restriction at a young age is what gave me that hunger. So that's how I got into it. He was a racing driver. Who doesn't want to be like their dad? You know what I mean? He was like my hero when I was a kid. And so when he was telling me no, I was like, oh no. Yes, so here I am. So it worked out, I guess. I've been professional for like, oh, I've had some glitches in on the way, but this is like my ninth year of Monster Energy. So technically being sponsored by them, you're a professional driver. So it's not, not as every childhood's dream, every kid's dream to go professional as a racing driver. So I made it work with a lot of help from a lot of people, but I made it work, so.